Rise and shine, porcupines. Algebra without time. And I'm your host, Al Rosetti. Today we're working on chapter two, unit six, step functions. So after watching this video, students will be able to graph a piecewise and a step function. The concept is piecewise functions, the skills being able to graph them. So what do you say we get started, shall we? Okay, so take a look at number one. Now, you may not have seen graphs such as this, but all we're gonna do is take each one of these equations and we're gonna graph one line for each of them on the same graph. We're gonna utilize the inequality signs to know where to start and stop our line. So the inequalities will tell us where to start and stop the three lines, okay? so. Here we go. Now, there are two ways you could do this that I think that uh, will connect with you. One would be just to do a table of values and graph the two points. We need two points to be able to draw the line. The other way is to realize that f of x represents just y. And so what you have on the first equation is you have y equals negative one. On the second one, you have y equals 2x. And on the third one, you have y equals 6. They're in slope-intercept form that way. You can graph them, still use the inequalities to know where to start and stop your lines and whether you're going to use open or closed circles. Okay, so if we use a table of values for the first one, what we're saying is y equals negative 1. No matter what I pick for x, y is going to be negative 1. So we're gonna start with zero, because that's what they give us. They want us to go less than, so the next digit less than zero is negative one, but it doesn't matter. Whatever we put in, y is gonna be negative one. Okay, so we plot those two points. Look at the inequality. It wants you to go less than or equal to zero. So at zero, we will put a closed circle, and we will draw a line to the left. Now the equation in slope-intercept form is y equals negative one. Now we know that that is a straight line through the y at negative one, and we will still use the inequality to draw a closed circle and end it at zero because that's what the inequality wants us to do. It wants us to graph everything less than or equal to zero, and that would be to the left to negative infinity. All right, so let's take the next equation, 2x. First, let's do a table of values. So whatever x is, we have to multiply it by two to get our second point. Remember, we need two points. We're gonna start with zero, because that's the point they give us, and then we're gonna end with three, because that's the ending point they give us, right? They want us to graph in between three and zero. So we substitute in three, two times three is six. So there's our two coordinates, so we're gonna plot those points first. We draw our line. Using the inequality, we're gonna have an open circle at zero and a closed circle at three. Now, let's look at it as, as if it was uh, an equation in slope-intercept form. We have a slope of two, the y-intercept is zero, so at zero we would go up one, or up two over one, up two over one. You can see it's the exact same line. Still using the inequalities to graph whether it's open or closed circles. All right, the last one for number one, y equals six. That's the equation, right? For anything greater than three. So let's do a table of values. Basically, it doesn't matter what we pick for x, y is six, that's what this means. So what's the next number greater than three? That's four, four, three, six, four, six. There's your two points. Now look at it as if it's an equation in slope-intercept form, y equals six. We know that's a straight line right through six at the, on the y, but we would end it at three because that's the inequality. And it would be an open circle. Okay, so everything greater than three, open circle to the right. So either way you wanna do this, whatever, whatever fits best with you. I like doing the slope intercept because you have to use the inequalities the same way. It doesn't matter which method you use to get the line, you still have to use the inequalities to know where to start and stop. This way you don't have to do any calculations. All right, so 
let's take a look at let's take a look one more time. I'm taking my time on this first one. So you can see on the first graph it was x less than or equal to zero. And if we were graphing on a number line, that's what it would look like. And that's exactly what it looks like on a graph. All right, the next one. So we want x greater than zero and less than or equal to three. And if I would draw that on a number line, it would be a closed circle above three, always a zero, and it would be an open circle. So it's the exact same line, we're just doing it on the graph. And the last one, y equals six. If we, or I'm sorry, uh, x greater than three, we, what would we have? We would have a line drawn on the number line, right? It would be open circle at three, and it would extend to positive infinity, and that's what we have on the graph. All right, now they want us to identify the domain and range of this function. Remember that the domain is all x values, all possible x values, and the range is all possible y values. So look at this graph. Given the three lines, every one of those x coordinates would be intersected by the x axis. So no matter how I extend it, if I were to draw a dashed line up at any point on that x axis, I'm going to intersect in the top line y equals 6. Anything I draw to negative infinity is going to be intersected with the x axis. So the domain in this case is all real numbers. You can either write all real numbers, or you can put in uh, brackets the fancy R, which is just an R with another line right through it that represents all real numbers. Now the range, look where the range is. That's on the y-axis, right? It starts at negative one, and it goes up to eight. So the range would be y equals x, or I'm sorry, y greater than negative one and less than eight. Okay, number two, here we go again. So look at the first equation. They're saying that y equals negative x. So if you make a table of values, whatever we pick for x, and we're gonna start with negative one, so it would be negative one, and if we substitute it in for negative x, we'd have negative negative one, which would make it positive one. We put in negative two, right? It'd be negative negative two, and that would make it positive two. So there's our points that we're gonna use to graph. Once we do the points, you can see the line. Look at the inequality. It's an open circle because there's no equal sign, right? And it's going to go to the left. Let's look at number two, or the second equation in that. We have y equals zero, okay? So no matter what we pick for x, y is zero. So negative one, zero, right? One, zero. So y equals zero, you know, is a straight line right through the x-axis. We would start it at negative one and end it at positive one. At negative one, it would be a closed circle. At positive one, it would be a closed circle based on the inequality. All right, third equation in that is y equals x, right? So no matter what we pick for x, y is going to be the same thing, right? One, one, two, two, doesn't matter. So when we graph that, you can see that it's, an, it's going to be an open circle at 1. It's going to go to the right. It's greater than. And there is your graph for those three lines. Now let's talk about domain and range. Once again, you can see that the x-axis, no matter how far you draw it out, negative to positive infinity, if you drew up to the uh, lines, you will intersect them at some point. So once again, the domain in this case is gonna be all real numbers. Now the range, that's gonna start at zero, right? Y is gonna be equal to zero to positive infinity. All right, these are called step functions, and you can see why. I put the parent function right in the middle. You can see that it creates steps. Now, the best way to handle these step functions, and it's the way the, the book really wants you to do it anyway, is to understand what these values do to the parent function. So if we have y equals x, there's your parent function, right? It goes from uh, 0 to 1, 
one to two, two to three. What does that plus one do to the parent function? Well, the plus one, what it does is it raises it up one unit. So all we're gonna do is take that exact same graph and we're gonna move everything up one. So we're gonna start out from one to two, two to three, right? We're gonna go from negative one to zero. So all we're gonna do is take those lines, move them up one unit, and then draw the exact same lines. You can see the, uh, the pattern. So what does the plus one do? It moves it up one. So that is the way you would graph f of x equals x plus one. And those brackets represent the fact that it is a step uh, function. So plus one, we raise it up one. Now look at the second, look at number six. So if plus one means to raise the whole thing up one, what's the minus three mean? What, what is the negative three gonna do to it? Well, it's going to take the parent function, which we have right there, and we're gonna move each one of those lines down three units. So the first one, so zero to one, we would move that down to negative three. So it'd be negative three to one. Then we would move the one to two down to negative two and one. Just move everything down three units, okay? So the best way to handle these functions is to understand what the parent function is doing, is to know the parent function and then just know what those values do to the parent function, okay? So the domain for number one, I mean, I'm sorry, for number five, the domain, once again, there is not gonna be any X value that you can come across that will not work for this function. So the domain is gonna be all real numbers. The range is also gonna be all real numbers because every one of those Y values, because this is a continuous graph, no matter where you draw your line on the Y axis, you're gonna intersect this function. So both domain and range will be all real numbers. And you can, once again, you can either write all real numbers like I did on this one, or you can write that fancy R. Either way. All right, so let's, uh, let's continue on. So number six is f of x equals x minus three in those brackets. In those brackets, you've probably never seen them before. They're specific to these step functions. Once again, the negative three, what's it do to the parent function? It moves it down three units, each one of those. So what do we want to do? We want to know, we want to memorize that parent function right there, which is not hard, right? Zero to one, one to two, two to three. Now, the reason why the step functions look like that is because no matter what y is, if it falls in between one and two, we round down. So if, it, if x is one and y is one and a half in a, in a step function, it's still one. It only moves up to two when it is actually two. So if x is two and y is two and a half, it's still two. So it stays two, two until you actually get to the number three. Then it becomes two, three. So any halves or quarters, any decimals, it just stays, it rounds down. So one and three quarters, on a stem function would still be one, one. That's why it looks the way it does. All right, so let's take this step function that we're doing now, move it down three units. So at zero, one, we're gonna be at negative three, one, right? At negative one, one, we're gonna be negative four, one. So all we're gonna do is take this exact same function and we're gonna move it down. And all of these functions that we're doing are handled the exact same way. We're going to know what the parent functions are doing, and then we're just going to move. We're not gonna to have to do a table of values. We're not gonna to have to do any calculating. That is the way you wanna handle it. So you don't wanna to have to do a table of values for every function you do. Some of them you'll do and the points won't even end up being on a graph, and there's no reason for it. I'm not, notice I'm not doing any calculating here, just interpreting. That's what you have to do, just interpret. Okay, so, Here's your parent function. There's me moving them down three units, and that's it. And you have graphed the step function, f of x equals x minus three. So remember, 
The parent functions are easy to memorize. They're very easy, and this is the way you want to do it. Adjust the parent function based on the values. Okay, so here's another good example. Number seven, this is a absolute value graph. The absolute value graph is a perfect V that starts at zero and it goes to one, 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 negative one, two, 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 negative two. So there's your parent functions. I did a table of values so you can see that, but only so you can see why the y values are what they are. So knowing the parent function, forget the values, knowing the parent function, what does that two do to the graph without doing any calculating? What it does is it moves the graph. It makes it like skinnier, right? It stretches it. And all you have to do to figure out what that graph will look like is take the two, multiply the y coordinate in the parent function by two. So it would be, instead of negative two, two, it would be negative. Okay, so when you see the two in front of the brackets or in a different function be in front of the parentheses, you're gonna multiply the y values of the parent function and those will be the points that you would graph. So, like I said, Instead of negative 2, 2, we're going to multiply the y value by 2, so it would be negative 2, 4. Instead of negative 1, 1, it would be negative 1, 2. All we're doing is multiplying the y coordinate by 2. Anytime it's in front of the brackets or in front of the parentheses like that, it's all we need to do instead of creating another table of values. Okay, so it's going to end up stretching it, make, you know, it's going to make it... Uh, they call it a stretch, but it's just going to a vertical stretch, but it's going to make it look smaller. You know, the middle is going to be compressed. So that's the way we want to handle that. So all you got, all you're going to do is you're going to see instead of negative two, two, right? It's going to be negative two, four. It's going to be negative one, two. You can see the parent function on the right there. And it's just a vertical stretch. Just makes it skinnier. But what I'm trying to get across here is know the parent function and then know what the values do to the parent function based on where they're placed. So in front of the brackets, you multiply the y coordinate by that number. And then you plot the points. It's still going to start at zero. It's still going to be, looks like a V, right? It's just going to be stretched vertically. And when it comes to absolute value, look at the... Uh, Look at the values. Look at the pattern. 4, 2, 0, 2. Once it repeats, they all repeat. So you wouldn't even have to do those last couple of ones. You know that it has to be 2 and 4 because that's the pattern. They're symmetrical. If you split them right down the middle, they'll be exact. So there's your graph. And we did one little bit of calculating. All we did is multiply 2 times the y coordinate without having to make a whole new table of values. No reason for that. Okay, so let's look at the uh, domain and range for this. Now the domain is gonna be all the X values, right? And those arrows, those lines, even though they go up at a pretty sharp angle, anywhere I stretch the X axis, no matter how far I take it out, I'm going to be able to intersect those lines. So the domain for number seven is gonna be all real numbers. Let's look at the range. So the range for number seven, it's gonna start at zero, right? And it's go to positive and negative infinity. So the range will be all values greater than or equal to zero, right? It's because it starts at zero. All right, let's look at number eight. So once again, we have an absolute value function. Now, the plus one outside the brackets, what is that going to do to it? Okay, that's what we have to focus on. We already know what the parent function of an absolute value looks like, right? It starts at zero, it's one, one, negative one, one, two, two, negative two, two. What happens to the function when we put plus one? So what do we do? We're going to move the parent function 
plus one outside the brackets, it goes up one. So instead of zero, zero, we're gonna be at zero, one, right? Instead of negative one, one, we're gonna be at one, negative one, two, right? So we're just moving everything up one position. So instead of one, one, right? We're gonna be one, two. Instead of two, four, we're gonna be at what? Up one, two, five. So there's the parent function. I'm sketching it up there for you so you can see. Now just take that and move everything up one spot. That's how you wanna handle graphing these functions. You don't wanna to have to do a table of values for every function you're given. If you know the parent function and you know what the values do outside the brackets, inside the brackets, that's all there is to it. Look how easy that is to do. If you know the parent function, move it up one, and there it is. Let's talk about domain and range. Domain and range is gonna be all real numbers for the domain. And once again, it's gonna be y greater than, this time it's gonna be greater than one because we moved it up one. And that's what it looks like nicely graphed. All right, so what am I trying to get across? I'm trying to get across to you, if you know the parent functions, it's easy. All you have to do is make some adjustments based on where the values are. You don't need to do a table of values every time, okay? That's all we have for you today, kids. So thanks for showing up. And remember, math, math, math. Get up and do some math.